What's up and welcome back to Cryptographics. Today, we're talking about PulseX buy and burn and its potential effect on price. Let's get right into it. So let's start with just talking about PulseX real quick. PulseX is the decentralized exchange that will be the most liquid, so it has the most tokens available to swap and have the cheapest fees on the soon to be released Pulse Chain network. It has a built-in fee of 0.29% per transaction, which is around 70, 76% going to liquidity providers. 3% is going to an address you should have no expectations of, some sort of anonymous dev associated wallet. And 21% is used to buy and then burn PLSX from that 0.29% fee. So PLSX is the native token to PulseX, which allows users to vote in a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, on the reward tokens that will end up in PulseX staking pools at a minimum. There may be more, but for now, we'll just leave it as expect that to be what PulseX will allow you to do. Once Pulse Chain is launched, though, PulseX will never have any more tokens than it began with, making it deflationary due to the buy and burn function. So this means that anyone that sacrificed for PulseX will hold all the cards. They will hold the only portion of, or the only supply that will be available will be made available to people that sacrificed, right? So once coins go through this buy and burn function, they are permanently removed from supply. The buy and burn, a function anyone can initiate, buys PLSX, acting like someone making a purchase in the way it would affect price, and then permanently removing the tokens from supply, burning them. So let's analyze what that can mean for price. The price of PulseX. First, let's take a moment to understand how price appreciates on a token. Price depends on the amount of a given token in a liquidity pool in comparison to what its trading pair is. So stick with me. We're going to go through this. It might be a little complicated. I'll go slow, but it's important to learn this. Think of it like this. In order for you to exchange token X or any token for any other token, someone must have created a pool with an equal number or an equal dollar value of the token you have and the token you want. Okay. So as more people do what you did and exchange token X for this other token, you are increasing the amount of tokens in one side of the pool and decreasing the other side. Because when you place token X in the pool for token Y, you are increasing the token X supply and decreasing token Y supply because it's a pair. That's how, you, that's how you're able to trade, right? If someone has put in a pair of tokens at an equal dollar value, right? And now because that ratio or the, the ratio from side A to side B is changing, one side is decreasing, meaning like we're talking about here, this would mean that the side of the decreasing amount of tokens will see an increase in its dollar value while the other side will be decreasing in dollar value. So it's important to have a general understanding of this for what we're about to talk about. To be clear, the ratio of one side of a liquidity pool to another determines price appreciation or depreciation for given digital assets. And there are a few more factors to this, um, but it's outside the scope of this video. I don't wanna get too in depth in that because um, most of this is just rough analysis of what could be and what's likely to uh, happen, uh, generally speaking. So let's keep, let's keep going and ask the question, why is this important for PLSX? Well, when it comes to PLSX and the buy and burn, 21% of each fee is used to purchase PulseX or PLSX from liquidity and permanently burn it. Because this function is buying from a liquidity pool, it is acting as someone buying PLSX in large amounts every time someone triggers the function. And that function can be called by anybody. And I would like to do that in a future video, but for this, we're just gonna go over the logistics, okay? So let's look at some rough math to see what the, Let's look at some rough math to see what that might look like daily. Currently, Uniswap is Ethereum's major exchange and gets around one to around $2 billion in daily volume exchanged in the protocol. Let's use a conservative estimate of what PulseX might get at $1.2 billion in daily volume on average over the course of one year. So 21% of 
0.29%, which is the total transaction fee, is roughly 0.06% of each, is what is taken out of each transaction and bought from, uh, and bought of PulseX. So if we times 1.2 billion by 0.06, we get 720,000. And that means every single day, if we got $1.2 billion in volume, we would get $720,000 that would be bought up from the buy part of the buy and burn which will act like large purchases throughout the day on PLSX. So in the beginning, if PLSX price is 0 0.0005, again, this is just a hypothetical, just to be able to kind of roughly measure how this is going to work. So if it's at 0 0.0005 at launch, then approximately 1.44 billion tokens would be burned in a 24 hour period with the daily volume of $1.2 billion. So this can quickly change due to price appreciation, however. So if the price appreciates to 0 0.005, so it's a 10X from 0 0.0005, that same $720,000 will only buy 144 million tokens now. If price were to appreciate to 0 0.05, now only 14.4 million tokens are purchased. And in a completely hyperbolic and hypothetical scenario, where the pulse, the price of Pulse X is two dollars and fifty cents. That same seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars only buys two hundred and eighty-eight thousand tokens. So, what does that mean for price long term? In the early months, this is likely to create massive upward pressure on price and slowly taper off as time goes on, due to it taking more and more money to buy the same number of tokens over time. If you look at how much the price of HEX moves from a $300,000 buy at around the 11 cent range, I know we're at about 15, 16 cents now. Uh, I think even higher, actually. I haven't even looked today. But it at that price range, when we were there, it was around the 5-ish percent mark, uh, roughly speaking, right? So as time goes on, however, the same buy pressure could act more like a hedge against sellers, uh, more so than simply placing high pressure on the price movement. Right, So as the price goes up, people are going to want to take gains. And when that happens, this may act as a hedge against the major drops that we could see or the volatility to the downside that we could see from people uh, taking those gains, right? Because we're buying up. In order for someone to take gains, they have to sell their PulseX, right? Um, if they're not selling the reward token and they're selling and doing it directly from PulseX, they're getting rid of their PulseX to get their money. And when that PulseX goes in the market, that hurts the price, right? When this buy happens, it's going to counteract that to a degree. So let's look at a graph that is not to do with price. And repeat that, it is not to do with price, but with how I see the buy feature placing upward pressure on price over time. So this graph that I'm about to show is how much pressure will be applied over time by the math we're doing here in this whole scenario. So this is all an opinion. When PulseX first begins, the amount of buy pressure will have its highest impact due to the price per token being its cheapest. Over time, it will provide less and less upper pressure to the price as the price of PulseX increases. Again, this does not account for what price will do as volatility is imminent, like we were talking about, as people sell to extract any gains they wish to cash out on, nor does it account for fluctuations in volume because increases in volume could bring up the amount that is bought through this function per day, right? So this is just a general idea of exactly how the buy pressure's impact over time could be, okay? So we see the graph there is starting at a steeper angle and we're slowly tapering off over time. Here's where things get interesting. Now that we've talked about the buy and buy and burn, how could the burn feature affect price? The burn feature is unlikely to have any effect on upward pressure for some time. In the early days, the amount of PLSX that's being burnt will be a very small percentage of supply. And over the course of one year, if price starts at 0 0.0005 and ends at 0 0.005, assuming it went up fairly consistently, the average price would be somewhere around 0 0.00275. So if we average out how much PLSX will be removed in that year, we would have burned roughly 
105.12 billion tokens, which is slightly less than 1% of the total supply because the total supply will be around 13 trillion. So let's assume there is another 10x growth in the following year from 0.005 to 0.05, giving us an average price of 0.0275 over that year. Now we have removed 9.5 billion tokens from supply, which is 0.07% of supply roughly. After two years of 10x growth, we have still only burned about 1% of the total supply. So how will this impact the upward pressure on PLSX? It's an inverted graph of what we were looking at first. And this exponential curve is actually a little more extreme, I believe, than what this will actually act out like or the pressure it will create on price over time. So again, this is only how I see it impacting pressure on price over time, not how the price is going to perform. So in the initial number of years, it is most likely that it will have a very low impact on upward pressure of price. This will add up over a long period of time as PLSX becomes more and more scarce, meaning less and less PLSX will be able to make it into liquidity pools, which is why we see it slowly curving because as the amount of PLS in circulation shrinks, the demand will go up, but also people will want to hold it. So that will slowly start to increase in its effect on the amount that will that can make it to liquidity pools, which will affect the amount of price or the, the pressure on price. So I believe this is especially the case due to PLSX staking pools being a potential driving force in the limiting in limiting the amount of PLSX on the market in general because people can sell other tokens they earn instead of their golden goose, PLSX. I'm gonna repeat that a little bit. If someone has PLSX and they have their, that's their golden goose, that's making them more eggs, which is your reward tokens, where you can stake in a pool just to earn those reward tokens. Why would you sell your PLSX? You would sell your reward token, whichever one that might be. So people are going to be hoarding their PLSX most likely more often than not to earn the reward token and we're selling down that one, especially if they're thinking it through properly. Why would you shoot yourself in the foot, right? So assuming this is all true, it may take a number of years for PLSX to see the effects of deflation. However, it will act as a compensatory pressure to the buy function as its ability to create upward pressure over time decreases. And we're talking about the buy function's ability to uh, create upward pressure over the time, right? Because like we saw in the graph, it moves up and flattens out over time versus this is effect, I believe will kind of curve upwards and compensate where the one starts to plateau. This one will start to come up and this may be a long time before this happens, but I think this is how they're going to match up. So finally, all in all, it seems like not only does PLSX want to drive itself up in its early years, but when that mechanism's impact tapers off, the deflation will slowly start to affect the price in a compensatory manner over a longer span of time. What this does not account for is anything to do with price. This is merely pressure applied to price movement over time. All these numbers are estimations just to show in an extremely rough fashion how this may all work. The price could go up faster or slower. The volume could be higher or lower on Pulse X. Sellers could dominate the market for different periods of time, etc. So all this video is showing is how the buy and burn creates short-term and long-term pressure on upward movement of price and how unique it truly is for a token. I don't think we've ever seen a token or I've, I haven't seen a token that has been as well designed as this where with the demand already being so high, there being upward pressure short term and seemingly long term on price as well as a utility for it as well it's amazing i'm really excited for pulse sex if you can't tell by these videos so guys thank you so much for watching we just passed 1800 subscribers that's insane y'all are incredible thank you so much i'm very happy that you all are enjoying the content and i will definitely keep it coming if you haven't followed me already on twitter Follow me at Cryptographics, that's C-R-Y-P-T-O-G-R-F-X on Twitter. And guys, if you like the video, please like the video. If you want to see more of this content, subscribe. And I'd love to know if you agreed with me, if you disagree with me, if you have more thoughts, if you have future videos that you want to see, anything at all, I'd love to hear what you have to say. 
So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.